Hi friends, it's Wiki Wednesday in Pupper Pie Land. Today, we're going to talk about dragons. I have a dragon stuffy. I thought he was just another kind of dinosaur, but Daddy says he's really a dragon. Do you know the difference? Let's find out together. The link for the Wikipedia article is below. Dragon facts. A dragon is a large serpentine legendary creature that appears in the folklore of many cultures around the world. Beliefs about dragons vary considerably through regions, but dragons in Western cultures since the high Middle Ages have often been depicted as winged, horned, four-legged, and capable of breathing fire. Dragons in Eastern cultures are usually depicted as wingless, four-legged, serpentine creatures with above average intelligence. That's pretty interesting. Dragons behave differently, kind of like dog breeds. Cavaliers are trusting, easygoing, and friendly. Poodles are loyal and smart, and I am both. The earliest attested reports of draconic creatures resemble giant snakes. Draconic creatures are first described in the mythologies of the ancient Near East and appear in ancient Mesopotamian art and literature. Stories about storm gods slaying giant serpents occur throughout nearly all Indo-European and Near Eastern mythologies. The popular Western image of a dragon is typically depicted as a large, fire-breathing, scaly, horned, lizard-like creature. The creature also has leathery, bat-like wings, four legs, and a long, muscular, prehensile tail. Some depictions show dragons with one or more of feathered wings, crests, ear frills, fiery manes, ivory spikes running down its spine, and various exotic decorations. In Western cultures, dragons are portrayed as monsters to be tamed or overcome, usually by saints or culture heroes, as in the popular legend of St. George and the Dragon. Western dragons seem mean. I would bark at them and tell them to go away. They are often said to have ravenous appetites and to live in caves where they hoard treasure. Caves are dark and no fun at all. These dragons appear frequently in Western fantasy literature, including The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien and A Song of Ice and Fire by George R.R. R. Martin. Dragons from Chinese are legendary creatures in mythology, folklore, and Chinese culture at large. Chinese dragons have many animal-like forms, such as turtles and fish, but are most commonly depicted as snake-like with four legs. They traditionally symbolize potent and auspicious powers, particularly control over water, rainfall, typhoons, and floods. The dragon is also a symbol of power, strength, and good luck for people who are worthy of it in East Asian culture. I think I'd like to be a Chinese dragon if I could be a dragon. I could symbolize happiness, fun, and treats. During the days of Imperial China, the Emperor of China usually used the dragon as a symbol of his imperial strength and power. Commonalities between dragons' traits are often a hybridization of birds, cats, and reptile creatures, and many include snake-like features, reptilian scaly skin, four legs with three or four toes on each, spinal nodes running down the back, a tail, and a serrated jaw with rows of teeth. See, if they were based on puppies, they'd be cute and cuddly. Several modern scholars believe huge extinct or migrating crocodiles bear the closest resemblance, especially when encountered in forested or swampy areas, and are most likely the template of modern dragon imagery. Sources of Inspiration Draconic creatures appear in virtually all cultures around the globe. Nonetheless, scholars dispute where the idea of a dragon originates from, and a wide variety of hypotheses have been proposed. In his book, An Instinct for Dragons, anthropologist David E. Jones suggests a hypothesis that humans, just like monkeys, have inherited instinctive reactions to snakes, large cats, and birds of prey. The earliest attested dragons all resemble snakes or bear snake-like attributes. Jones therefore concludes that the reason why dragons appear in nearly all cultures is because of humans' innate fear of snakes and the other animals that were major predators of humans' primate ancestors. I told you so. Nobody is afraid of cute little puppies. Dragons are usually said to reside in dank caves, deep pools, wild mountain reaches, sea bottoms, haunted forests, 
all places which would have been fraught with danger for early human ancestors. In her book, The First Fossil Hunters, Dinosaurs, Mammoths, and Myth in Greek and Roman Times, Adrian Mayer argues that some stories of dragons may have been inspired by ancient discoveries of fossils belonging to dinosaurs and other prehistoric animals. She argues that the dragon lore of northern India may have been inspired by observations of oversized, extraordinary bones in the fossil beds below the Himalayas, and that ancient Greek artistic depictions of the monster of Troy may have been influenced by fossils. In China, a region where fossils of large prehistoric animals are common, these remains are frequently identified as dragon bones and are commonly used in Chinese traditional medicine. Mommy always thought that dinosaurs might be fake and dragons real. Maybe she is right? Modern depictions. Dragons and dragon motifs are featured in many works of modern literature, particularly within the fantasy genre. As early as the 18th century, critical thinkers such as Denis Diderot were already asserting that too much literature had been published on dragons. Quote, there are already in books all too many fabulous stories of dragons, end quote. In Lewis Carroll's classic children's novel, Through the Looking Glass, one of the inset poems describes the Jabberwock, a kind of dragon. In works of comedic children's fantasy, dragons often fulfill the role of a magic fairy tale helper. helper. I like helper dragons. Can I be a helper dragon instead? In such works, rather than being frightening as they are traditionally portrayed, dragons are instead represented as harmless, benevolent, and inferior to humans. They are sometimes shown living in contact with humans or an isolated community of only dragons. Though popular in the 19th and early 20th centuries, such comic and idyllic stories began to grow increasingly rare after the 1960s due to demand for more serious children's literature. One of the most iconic modern dragons is Smaug from J.R.R. Tolkien's classic novel, The Hobbit. Dragons also appear in the best-selling Harry Potter series of children's books by J.K. Rowling. Other prominent works depicting dragons include Anne McCaffrey's Dragon Riders of Pern, Ursula K. Le Guin's Earth Sea Cycle, George R. R. Martin's series A Song of Ice and Fire, and Christopher Paolini's Inheritance Cycle. Sandra Martina Schwab writes, quote, With a few exceptions, including McCaffrey's Pern novels and the 2002 film Reign of Fire, dragons seem to fit into the more medievalized setting of fantasy literature, than into the more technological world of science fiction. Indeed, they have been called the emblem of fantasy. The hero's fight against the dragon emphasizes and celebrates his masculinity, whereas revisionist fantasies of dragons and dragon slaying often undermine traditional gender roles. In children's literature, the friendly dragon becomes a powerful ally in battling the child's fears. End quote. The popular role-playing game system, Dungeons & Dragons, makes heavy use of dragons. Hey, my daddy plays these games. I'd rather he played fetch with me, though. After recent discoveries in paleontology, fictional dragons are sometimes represented with no front legs, but walking on their back feet and the wrists of their wings while on the ground, like pterosaurs did. Hey, we just learned about pterosaurs last month, and then I got to bark at them at the Jurassic Quest drive through This often raises debates among fans as to whether or not they should be more specially called a wyvern or whether as a subspecies of dragons or perhaps an entirely different creature. So that's all to know about dragons learned from Pupper Pie, the Chinese helper dragon of cuteness, fun, and treats. I may not be able to breathe fire, but I do have a long lean body like a dragon, and I even got to fly once. But you'll hear about that trip on Monday in my very special next Music Monday song. And come back on Friday for the next part of Lad, a Dog's Story on Fiction Friday. Thanks for learning with me today. Bye.